All right. Hello, everybody. We are welcoming folks into the webinar. So if you're watching on the recording, you're going to get a little bit of the administrative time here at the beginning while we kind of get everybody in and set up and get ready to go. So please use this time, get more comfortable, however that looks for you. Grab something to write with and something to write on um, because this will be, even if you're not attending live, you're watching the replay, it's going to be really interactive um, and with a lot of parts for you to get some self-reflection so that you take out of this really what you need. All right. And hello to our friends popping in. I can't see you. So if anybody's nervous about that, you are totally camera off, like pick your nose, do your makeup, like get that spinach out of your teeth while you're eating, whatever you need to do. Um, but as we kind of open and welcome everybody in, I am going to drop, um, oh, Stephanie and Michael at the league. I don't know if we have the chat function available for everybody to talk to each other, or if we can switch that up. I'm only seeing an option for. Yeah, I'm in um, investigating right now. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So folks, as we're bringing that in, um, if you are able to drop into the chat, uh, name where you're coming in from, and let us know if you can see uh, the league's kind of like little testing thing in there, but name where you're from. And then I always say on a scale of one to five, one being meh, five being marvelous, where are you at today? So one kind of on the low end, five on the high end, three sort of in the middle. And if you could drop that into the chat, that would be super duper helpful. Um, yeah, we're seeing over here, Q&A says chat is disabled. All right, the league. Ooh, there we are, it's friends. Okay, now. there we go. We see in it. Oh, look at this. Okay, we got some twos, some fours. Jessica's coming in at a five. All right, fours. The city of Phoenix, Public Works, Mesa, Maricopa County Library District coming in at a four. Hi, Heather. All right, Chandler PD. So three. Got some fives in here. All right. April's at work. Uh, Heather and team with development services at a seven. All right. What's up, competitive? I like it. So Rita's at a two. We're going to see if we can bring that up. Oh, Hope is matching you at your seven. Got some fours. We are all over the place. This is awesome. Thank you, everybody, for doing that. Um, so we're going to have two kind of functions in the webinar. We're going to have the chat, which is where you're going to kind of like chat with each other, connect, comment on what you're hearing. I'm going to ask a couple of questions. I'd like them to go there, um, your responses. And if you have a question that you want me to tackle, the cleanest way we're going to see that is Kelly and I are going to be monitoring the Q&A. So I want you to kind of like use both of them. It goes in the chat. It might get a little bit buried. So go ahead and stick it over um, in the Q&A. That's going to be the higher likelihood that we are um, going to see those over there. Because I don't know about you, Kelly, but I look like NASA space station right now with like little boxes and like it's going to, this will be interesting. It's always, I do too, as well as like having my pad of paper ready. I have to have my water. Like you have to lay everything out and have it all ready to go. Exactly. Which is a perfect intro for where we're going to start today. Okay. Well, it's 1133. I have a big, you know, we were just talking about me yeah. starting on time, ending on time. So if you want to kick us off. Absolutely. So hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Kelly Whittemore. I'm a deputy city attorney with the city of Mesa, and I'm a member of the board of the Arizona Women Leading Government. Welcome to the second annual Arizona Women Leading Government webinar. This is a new series for us, but we're really excited about the interest and the engagement that we've received from everyone. Today's session is going to be a fun one. We have our very own Nicole Lance in the house who is going to get us all in the right mindset to carry us through the rest of this year. There's only a few months left and we're going to reclaim our year and get ready to reflect and take some action with Nicole today. Now, this is going to be interactive. So I'd mentioned I had my pad and piece of paper, or I'm sorry, my pen and my piece of paper out. Please make sure that you go and get your own. While you are doing that, let me do an introduction for our speaker. So Nicole Lance is a well-known executive coach and internationally certified life coach, best known for working with individuals and teams who are ready to make courageous transformations. 
Nicole spent almost 13 years in the trenches of local government, just like many of you, before wrapping up her career as an assistant city manager. Nicole now spends her time coaching, speaking, training, and facilitating. She's a co-founder of Arizona Women Leading Government, thank you, Nicole, and the Sustainable Cities Network, a partnership with Arizona State University. Along with serving as a coach with the International City County Management Association, she proudly serves on the board of Arizona's Children Association, a statewide adoption, foster care, youth behavioral health services agency with a particular focus on LGBTQIA plus youth. Nicole is also a member of Fighter County Foundation, an organization supporting the active duty men, women, and families at Luke Air Force Base. Nicole is an Arizona native, happily married to her husband, Sean, a high school teacher. She's a proud stepmom to a U.S. Navy sailor and also a mom to a five-year-old. She spends her free time trying not to step on the Legos that her daughter leaves hidden in the carpet. Um, now, Nicole recently released her book, Awesome on Your Own Terms, Stop Shooting and Start Succeeding, which hit number one in multiple categories on Amazon, and you absolutely should check it out. But now, Nicole, the floor is yours. All right. Well, thank you, my friend. Um, and hello to everybody. Hopefully you're still awake after um, that intro. Sometimes the, the bio, I'm like, I should really cut that down to about one sentence instead. So thanks for hanging in. Um, and so good to see everybody. I'm loving seeing all my friends like pop into the, the chat over there. So we're going to be focusing on reclaiming our year because even though it's August, um, it kind of feels like holy cow, we're almost to the end of the year already. Like all that's left is this and we're going to get into end of year sort of things. It seems like everything moves a little bit faster this time of year. So I wanted to kind of refocus us and we're going to be doing it by minding our P's and Q's. So if you know me at all, you know I'm not really like a P and Q in the traditional sense kind of person, um, but we are going to be doing six powerful practices and I'm going to give you five crucial questions to be asking to really help yourself kind of close out 2023 the way that you want it to. And so the first kind of like starting point where we always begin is practice number one, which is holding the space. So a lot of you, I'm guessing, are coming into this. We've got other things going on. You have busy schedules, other considerations. Maybe you have a couple other windows open, even just on your screens and in your offices. Maybe your phone is still going off and people are, are checking in and kind of like contacting you. And so one of the practices I like to say whenever we're moving into a space of being more intentional is to really learn and practice holding time and holding space for this, because that kind of like suck of energy into the multitasking is often a big part of what holds us back because we're never fully engaging in one thing or the other thing. Now, for some of us, we do that by virtue of needing to survive, right? We're pulled in a lot of directions. We have multiple commitments. People need us. We're trying to be and do all of the things and accomplish those goals. And yet at the same time, when we're moving in all of those directions, sometimes it's the thing that's going to keep us from moving where we really want to go. So one of the things I'd like to offer you as a practice to use this time for is to actually see if you can hold the space. And if you can't give the whole entire hour, maybe set a five minute timer before you check in on those other windows or pick that phone back up. Maybe try 10 and just give yourself the opportunity to use this, kind of cultivate that muscle and see if you can start to build that as a practice so that you can be more powerful in moving towards kind of cultivating that, as I always say, the life and career you really love. Okay, now practice number two is one to keep in mind, not just for like moving into the next couple of months, but really specifically for this webinar. Cause I'm gonna prompt us with a couple of questions. And I always encourage my clients, any group that I work with, any audience that I work with to really focus on building awareness, but minus the judgment. Cause I know I did um, some versions of this exercise with my own coach a couple of weeks ago. And some of what came up for me, I was like, oh, I can't believe I did that. Like, oh, I can't believe I'm here. And it kind of moved into judgment zone, which is not going to be productive for what we want to do. So it's actually why I modified the shirt today. Um, so for my Bill and Ted fans, this used to say, be excellent to each other. So I just did like a quick printout and scotch tape job over here um, to kind of remind myself as well as all of you to really focus on being excellent to yourself because that's going to be a really powerful starting point for what we want to do. Okay, 
So practice number three is to think differently. Now, this is one of those like says easy, does hard kind of things, um, which is like, if I just say, go be innovative, like a lot of you have organizational values around innovation, go be innovative. You're like, cool, that's not actually going to drive anything different for me. So we want to really step into a space where we can kind of start to access a different angle of how we think so that we can get a different outcome. There's kind of that idea like what brought us here won't get us there. So let's introduce a kind of new way to think. And this is going to be the first one that I'm going to put up here. And I'm going to ask you to drop an answer into the chat. If you're not comfortable showing everybody your answer, make sure you do that little drop down. And instead of to everyone, just send it to hosts and panelists. And that will be just um, myself, Kelly, and the league staff that will see it. You can probably also find me and just direct send. Okay. So here's the first way we're going to start to think differently. This is using a coaching tool called metaphor. So using metaphor as a way to prompt new sorts of thinking. So here's your first question for the practice of thinking differently. If the first part of 2023, so think January till now, was a meal for you, what would it be and why? So if you were to say the first part of 2023, as you look at it, what kind of meal would it be? That's going to feel weird for some of you. And that's by design because we're kind of like putting into place that practice of thinking differently. So for me, if 2023 was a meal, it would be a Marie Callender's pot pie, like the microwave kind, or you stick it in the oven. It's like a chicken pot pie, like pretty good, not that like unique, nothing exciting. But there would be like a really awesome ice cream sundae with it that had like all sorts of different ice creams and sprinkles and like a little sparkler sticking out of it. So some really kind of like mundane stuff that's been around and isn't new. And then like, ooh, something else is kind of happening here. This is sort of juicy and fun. Okay. So I'm going to read a couple of these, especially if you're watching the recording. We've got a bunch of them going in the chat. Um, so somebody uh, says something completely foreign that requires an acquired taste. So kind of a, a different sort of experience. Spaghetti, satisfying, but nothing new and exciting. Thanksgiving dinner, a lot, but maybe a little overwhelming. A bunch of random leftovers from the fridge. Fast takeout, eaten fast and on the go. A five course gourmet meal. Just started a new job, lots of exciting new projects an egg scramble with lots of veggies, chicken nuggets, easy and fast, kind of getting by. Um, sweet and sour chicken, sweet and sour chicken. Yep. So you see, as we start to use metaphor, like if I were to describe my year as a meal, you start to find a new way to kind of access how to describe what the experience is. Now, I'm going to read a couple more of these because I'm loving what's uh, coming in, like fajitas, hot and spicy and messy. Um, the intention behind this, when we access the right part of our brain, so left part of the brain is where a lot of us high achiever types will live, strategic, linear, logical. Well, left brain only ever lives in what has happened, past, so pulling data from prior experiences or what we've been told or, or observed, and future, which is a lot of where our anxiety and fear and concern and overwhelm come in. Because that left side of the brain, which is dominant for so many of us, it sort of like overtakes the ability to just be present. When we use metaphor, we actually push the brain into accessing that right side, more creative part of the brain. And I wanna kind of juice that up because I wanna get you into a space where you kind of reclaim your year, but from a really sort of like more creative space, not just kind of limited maybe by what's already happened. Like it's been kind of the chicken nugget sort of year, the chicken pot pie sort of year and move into like, ooh, what would be on my buffet? Okay, so let's read a couple of these. Um, the meal has been balanced and provided energy. A supreme deep dish pizza with extra toppings. It's delicious, but a lot. Okay, um, yeah, let's do some meal with a lot of steps and pots and pans, too many ingredients. Yeah, which also means too many dishes to clean up afterwards, right? Something spicy, and I don't like spice. Okay. So thank you for dropping those in. Keep doing that. But that this practice 
of thinking differently is is intentionally designed to help you access a different part of you that doesn't always get to come play. All right. So here is your first kind of crucial question. And this is, we're going to look at reclaiming our year. And I want to kind of think coming off of this, like how we've described the year, what was 2023 going to be the year of for you? So think back to yourself in like December, 2022, uh, into January, 23, what did you actually want? So we might've gotten scrambled eggs chaotic or scrambled, but easy to manage. But what was the thing that you wanted this to be the year of for you? Let's go ahead and drop those into the chat. We got a couple coming in. To blossom, growth, like professional growth, the year to thrive, the year of health, the year to make a big change, work-life balance, educational growth, Somebody dropped in the QA to work on my body and mind, the year of simplicity, self appreciation. I literally didn't think about it. I just operated day by day. Yep. And that happens, right? Which is why um, we kind of start with transforming that thinking and holding that space. So, learning and kind of cultivating not just the awareness around that, but the practice of being more intentional with that. Stop the feeling of being mediocre. Yes, the year of huge change, new professional chapters, calm. Um, okay, the year of letting go and not saying yes all the time. Amen. Okay, now next kind of reflection questions, crucial question number two. So we have kind of like what we were thinking or maybe what we didn't think about. If you were to name your year now based on what has actually transpired, what title would you give it? So we started the year of um, health or balance or, you know, letting go and not saying yes. What would it actually be if you were to kind of contrast that with what's actually transpired? And just drop that into the chat. <clears throat> A year of renewal, the year of me messing up everything, LOL, yeah, the year of what just happened, and there might be like an extra adjective in there somewhere, the year of A for effort, stretched satisfaction, that was unexpected, survival mode, the long and winding road, <laughs> some of y'all are having some themes here, the year of, wait, what, uh, you had a plan, oh, that's cute, okay, Stress, survival mode, surprise. It worked. Yeah. Ooh, the purge. Yeah. Dan, that sounds exciting. The year of the purge. I could use some more purge in my life. The gap year. Okay. So this comes back to that kind of like powerful practice around building awareness, not judgment. Because some of you are going to find like, hey, I was actually kind of on the mark for some of these. Um, wow, that didn't turn out at all what I expected. There's a number of you like that. And for some of you, it might be, this wasn't really the thing that I was expecting or maybe even wanting, but this is what I got. And I'm actually kind of getting a lot out of it. So it's kind of interesting to see where it goes. So again, this is tuning us into building that awareness minus the judgment um, part of it. So kind of like staying pretty clearly out of that so that you can keep that space clear to kind of focus on where you're going next, which brings us to powerful practice number four, which is transforming from to do, which is where most of us and many of us live into to be. So my friend, Justin, um, is a coach and an HR executive and just an all around like super good human. And one of his sort of tenets of how he approaches his work and his life is to constantly have what he calls the to be list for himself, not just the to do, because that's going to be there, but who do we want to be while we are doing this? So if I'm looking at this to do list, that's 97 items long. I'm feeling a little under-resourced. Maybe I'm tired. Maybe I'm, you know, feeling pressured, pulled in a bunch of different directions, frustrated. Maybe I'm feeling awesome. Who do I want to be 
while I'm not just going through that to-do list, but really kind of moving through my days. And so for me, one of the ways I access this is what comes through question three. So question three, sort of a two-parter, so it's like three and three A. What do you want the rest of the year to feel like? Because we spend a lot of time thinking what do we want to do society shoulds all over that shoulds all over us like you should accomplish this you shouldn't be doing that you should you should you should but we don't spend a lot of time thinking about well how do I actually want that to feel when I'm moving into that event I'm tackling that undertaking I'm heading out to achieve that goal what do I want the rest of the year to feel like so yeah, drop them in the chat. Thanks to those of you that are already um, popping those in. My big word for this, my biggest, most transformative word for myself this year has been unrushed. Unrushed. I am tired of feeling like I'm always crammed for time and like always being, you know, like, oh, I got to go from this to that to that. So I've really focused on, I want to feel unrushed. Now, when we center, that's kind of like a vibe check, like what's the vibe? How do I want it to feel? If I'm looking at my day and it's packed because just because I want to be unrushed doesn't mean that calendar's not like back to back to back, no time to go to the bathroom, no time to eat lunch. When I look at that and I center that feeling of being unrushed, it changes how I approach that day. Doesn't mean I'm not rushing, but it means I don't want to feel that way. So I might prep a couple of things a little bit differently. I might make sure the mini fridge in the office is stocked so I don't have to run out to the kitchen or the garage for something. Um, I might see if I can juggle something around a little bit, bring my yoga mat in, do some stretching between calls, anything to kind of cultivate that feeling. Okay, yeah, please adopt that for those of you who are saying, but I want to adopt um, unrushed. Okay, I want to feel... Yes, look at this. Secure, organized, in control, stable, please. Yeah, I want to feel stable. So we start with identifying it. Then we're going to work into practices to actually get us there. I want to be someone who helps and fosters positive change. I want it to feel calm, confident, lighter in mind and body, settled. I love that. I have a friend who had that as her word of the year a couple of years ago. It was really awesome. I want to feel like progress. I want to feel confident and accomplished, balanced, competent. Okay, so now tackle that like 3A question. Who do you want to be? When you think of how you want to feel, right? So I want to be, I want to feel unrushed. I want to be someone at, at the same time. I want to be someone who is still giving to others. I want to be someone who takes care of herself. I want to be someone who is really present. And so when I start to think of what is it going to take for me to show up those ways? So like, feel free if you're ready to do 3A, who do you want to be? Not just how I want it to feel, but who do I want to be? I want to be a leader, um, a truly kind person. Yep, that's showing up in the in the chat. Um, I wanted to be this year because I wanted to be, un I wanted to feel unrushed. I want to be someone who is capable of receiving help. And you can even see, I'm still like, oh, that's awkward to put out there. I'm still getting used to that. Receive is my word of the year for 2023. Because when I am more able to receive help, I know that helps me feel unrushed. All right. so to be an expert. Yeah, and you can see if I wanna be an expert versus I wanna be someone who's receiving help, it's gonna guide into different sort of behaviors. So again, building that awareness so that we can implement kind of strategies to help us get there. Authentic, assertive, owning all the emotions I experience. Yeah, president, present, not president, although you could be, uh, Heather. Present, confident, authentic, genuine patient and content, unapologetically myself. And so you start to see that once we've carved out space and we start to give a little bit more intention and thought work into this, it's like, 
oh, if I want to be unapologetically myself, I am going to choose to start to show up a little bit differently. I want to be able to ask for help. I might have to practice this. Yeah, I want to be available for my daughters. Yeah, if that centered behavior follows. This is kind of the the chicken and the egg thing. A lot of people think we have to get the behavior down first. I actually think you can reverse engineering and engineer yourself into it, but it has to start with that like real clarity around like that's the thing that I want. That's who I want to be. Not what I want to accomplish. That's who I want to be. Yeah. Um, somebody just dropped in more adventurous. If I want to be a more adventurous person, what does that look like? Okay. So one of the thing, one of the things that will get in your way, um, well, a couple of things, there's lots of things, um, but a couple of the things are overthinking, underthinking, <laughs> these dang to-do lists that just get huge. And then kind of this inability to filter out between what's really getting um, our investment of time and energy. So some of you might have already seen this tool. This is a great time to practice it, but this is a way to overcome. It says overthinking, but it really also helps you kind of overcome underthinking, which is what happens when we adopt all these things into our to-do list. We take them all as, yep, I have to accomplish all of this no matter what, and wow, I'm just going to be more stressed out, sleep less, and watch every YouTube video or listen to it while I'm doing 87 other things, trying to figure out how to get more done in less time. So this tool is going to kind of help you filter some of that. It's called the three Bs. Um, this is another coaching tool. And the way this works, if you have used it before, like tune it up if you haven't, the way that it works is you kind of map out what are those items on your to-do list, like all of them. And some of them we're going to not feel really excited about, or maybe kind of like yucky about. And some of them we might be like, yeah, I don't mind that. And there might be a few things that like, wow, I'm really excited about that. So take a minute and on your piece of paper, you can drop them in the chat. See if you can identify maybe two of each, two things on the upcoming to-do list that you're like, mm, not really excited about. Um, and then maybe two things on the to-do list that you're like kind of neutral or above neutral about. So I might say, um, I have to go to a doctor's appointment this afternoon um, because I have a kindergartner and thanks to my kindergartner, she just brings in every germ ever right in the first like three weeks of school, like a lot of you might be experiencing or have experienced. Um, so I have to go to the doctor's uh, office this afternoon and I have to take my truck in for an oil change. And for some reason, that is just not like anything I ever look forward to. So those would be my two kind of like meh sort of things. Two on the positive, um, I'm flying out this weekend for a uh, personal development retreat with my coach that I'm like really excited about. Um, and I have my nephew's wedding coming up in um, September. So those two might kind of land on there. So if you have them either written down or drop in the chat, give me a couple that you're like, maybe not so excited about or meh about, and then maybe a couple other um, that you are looking forward to. Okay. But like somebody's got a uh, parent teacher conference coming up. Heather's got a plan an event, go to the dentist. Yeah, dentist. I've spoken about this before. Dentist is low on my list of things I like to like to do. Um, somebody has vacation time coming up, upcoming travel, college tours with my senior. Oh my gosh. Meh, cleaning my home office. Yay, rafting in the Colorado River. Excited to go to my home country in December. Um, not excited to deal with marital stuff. Yeah. Uh, beginning contract renegotiations. Looking forward to my kitchen remodel being done. Have to spend an hour to set up 20 meetings this afternoon. Blech. Yeah. Game show party with a friend. Okay. So as you're putting these in, we've got kind of like the meh ones and the kind of the ones we're a little bit more excited about. Here's the three Bs. So this is going to work on both sides of that list. Um, yes. Okay. So first B, you look at that list 
And if it's in a meh kind of category, I want you to ask if you can bag it. If you could actually not do the thing. Because a lot of us don't even get to that point. We just go, ugh, yep, got to do that. Yep, got to organize the garage. Ugh, linen closets, messy again. Oh, got to, I don't know, whatever. Take grandma to get her dentures, you know, on and on and on. And so we don't even stop to ask, like, does this need to be on the list? So for me, um, I can't really, I definitely can't bag the doctor's appointment. Um, that's got to happen this afternoon. And I, I can't bag taking the car in for an oil change, at least not for very long. So I might be able to bag it today, but it's going to have to get done kind of soon. Um, my garage, on the other hand, that's incredibly messy. I can bag cleaning that because I'll tell you, I don't have the energy. I don't have the capacity. I don't have the time today. And that doesn't feel good. So can I bag it is the first question you're going to ask. So um, like Cassie's example, organizing paperwork. Could you bag it for today? If it's stressing you out, it doesn't feel good. It's not going to fit. Is that something that you could bag? Um, ordering office furniture. Yeah, Jana, like, could you wait? Like, you know, how bad? Maybe you're sitting on the floor right now and you need to actually order that furniture. But start to move. It's moving from fixed mindset into growth mindset. What I have to do into what I want to do, get to do, or choose to do. So um, one of my coaches always says, we exist at choice, meaning even if it's like that repetitive task that some of you have um, mentioned, like I am choosing to be here in this job and I'm going to choose to do those because it's going to make life easier, even if I don't love them. But we start with challenging. I have to, I have to. So fixed mindset, bag it. The second B, if you can't or don't want to bag it, looking at that list, could I barter this? to somebody else. So again, we're kind of more on the meh side of things right now. Could I barter cleaning the house so the dog doesn't eat dust? Barter might look like hiring a cleaning company, paying a family member, uh, cooking dinner for someone in exchange for doing that, right? So we start to look at where could I barter um, some of this? So Brandy, having another baby in your case, um, since you're already pregnant, <laughs> not an option, but could be bartered technically. Um, having to spend an hour to set up 20 meetings. I don't know. Could we barter some of that to somebody else and say, hey, I'll run and get lunch if you'll work on that. Or I'll do all of them next month if you'll do them this month. So bartering that. Um, in kind of my case, you know, like I can't barter the doctor's appointment, but you're darn sure I'm going to try and barter the car going in for an oil change with my partner. And I'm going to see, hey, if you will do that, I will give you Sunday all day free of chores and I'll do all the laundry, right? So I can barter some of that. In a work context, that might look like I'm going to go to this webinar, you go to the next one, we'll trade notes, um, going kind of back and forth. The third B you're going to want to look for on that list um, is better it. So meh side of the house or the positive side of the house. As we look at those things that are on that list and we're kind of reclaiming our year, we've sort of anchored into, I wanna feel powerful, I wanna feel calm, I wanna feel unrushed. If these things can't be bagged or bartered, whether I don't want to, I can't, I, they have a timeline, whatever it is, how do I make it better? How do I make it better? Because so many people settle for that's just how it is. It's just got to get done. It is what it is. Um, and we don't move far from that to say with a little bit of intention, how could this feel better? Right? So I've got my uh, nephew's wedding, which I'm already excited about. That's like a six out of 10 for me. I'm looking forward to it. You know, what would make it better planning something with my cousin, uh, my favorite cousin who's going to be in town the night before and making extra time to get together with her or going shopping for dresses with her. So how do I better that? On the mess side of the house, I've got this repetitive process. I got to organize this paperwork. I got to make these meetings. How do I make that better, right? And this isn't like toxic optimism, lipstick on the pig time, but seriously, maybe I could put on a cool playlist in the background while I did it. Um, maybe I get down on the floor and do five minutes of stretching or deep breathing before I start so that my nervous system is calm before I get into it. So again, we're kind of like 
leveraging this practice to start moving and cultivating that muscle of, I can have more influence over this if I choose to. I can't change everything, right? That's why some of these just default to better. And where I can, I want to do that powerfully. Okay, so practice number six. This is a daily sort of practice. I do this um, in the morning before my day gets started. Two of the questions I always ask are, what vibe do I want to have today? Like what, what vibe do I want this day of mine that I'm about to have? So for me today, woke up, not feeling good. No, I got to fit in this doctor's appointment. It moved a bunch of stuff around. I don't want to have the like, ugh, ugh, kind of day. I want a vibe today that felt playful. So I'm going to put on my, one of my favorite shirts and I'm going to make like, do something fun with it. And I'm going to wear my favorite pair of shoes later when I do go to the doctor's office, right? Because I want to have a playful vibe. So what vibe do I want today to have? And then the second one, and this was a question I really struggled with when I started integrating it into a daily practice. What am I opting out of today? Now, sometimes this actually means I'm going to opt out of a meeting. I'm going to opt out of cooking. I had a client do this. Um, I'm going to opt out of cooking the big dinner that I was planning on making for my family. And we're going to do takeout instead, because that gives me the vibe of being relaxed today. Um, it's not always a tangible thing. So often I will say, I'm going to opt out of stressful thinking. I'm going to opt out of anxiety today. I'm going to opt out of future casting where I take like today is busy, which means my whole entire life will be busy. And you know, then I'm like 30 years down the road wondering where my life went all of a sudden that might just be me. So what vibe do I want to have? And then what am I opting out of? Okay. So we've got some practices for daily, uh, daily sort of stuff. We've got some practices to help with fixed mindset, growth mindset, so that we can start to have room for more of these things that we want. Um, and we have kind of this like awareness without judgment sort of zone as we're sort of looking what's happening. So let's shift into what is coming. So when you, if you were to give a title for the remainder of your year, based on how you want it to feel, how you want to be, right? So we had all those things you popped in there earlier. What would you name it? So like it was the, it's going to be the year of adventure or the year of being unrushed. That's mine. The remainder of 2023 is like, that's my core focus. Um, what would you name it? So as those are coming in, again, this is um, leveraging our psychology, number one. So left into right side of the brain, getting a little more creative, giving something a name. And then number two, what you're doing with this is creating a really clear point for what is called attentional focus. So when I have something really clear to look towards or to kind of like benchmark off of, it helps me stay oriented. So think of it as like a little compass point for your attentional focus, where your focused attention kind of lands. So if I remind myself in a little sticky note that says the year of being unrushed, I'm like, oh, yep. Oh, Nikki forgot about that. <laughs> like reorient, reorient. How do we, how do we do this? Okay. Um, a year of clarity. A number of you have that. A year of reclamation. Um, the year of peace and calm, a year of moving forward, new successes, <clears throat> the, the year of no drama, man, I wish we could all adopt that one, right? The year of looking forward, crushing goals, the year of expectation shift, the year of chill, the year of progress, the great escape. Um, oh, I love this Roxanne, the remix to being me. So you can kind of see how, depending on how we title it, name it, it gives us something else to orient to. So if it's the year of let's do it, right? If that's the year of what it is for you and you find yourself um, with like wine and Cheetos on the couch every day, every weekend, you might question what's going to move me from wine and Cheetos, not always a bad thing, into the year of let's do it. So it gives you sort of that little something to connect to, um, to anchor to as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. So 
Um, at this point, oh, the year of embrace it and sail on. Yeah, because that would shift rather than if it's uh, the year of healing and integration, right? Which those might happen, but embrace it and sail on might be something totally different. Yeah, the year of self-awareness, I'm going to have a lot more focused time looking inwards on what's been going on for me, what's happening for me. The year of living deliberately. Okay. Um, before we move into kind of the very uh, sort of end segment and one of the final questions, um, if you have a question that you want to uh, put into the Q&A that you want me to tackle, it could be a coaching question, something uh, situational, Nicole, what the heck are you talking about? The last like 40 minutes have made zero sense. Why am I wasting my time on this webinar? Um, we can tackle kind of any of those. Um, I know somebody had sent me one separately uh, over email so I can chat about that one because um, they weren't able to attend but wanted me to answer a question. Um, and yeah, so oh, Kayla, the year of letting others figure it out, which is a beautiful one. And I'm so glad you dropped that in there because um, regardless of sort of position, often regardless of sort of like place in life or career, we, especially in the, the United States, like Western culture, have a tendency to go it alone, right? We need to figure it out. Then I will tell everybody, I need to fix it here, then um, get out there. Or what often turns into like rescuing behavior, right? I'm going to step in and help them and kind of prevent them from going sort of down that path, or I'm going to do it for them because that's what I've always done, or that's what this role has always done. That's what my family system encourages me into. So that when we shift it into the year of letting others figure it out, that draws a very distinct boundary um, between maybe even what they want you to do, how they want you to show up, and then how you can show up um, for yourself. OZ, the year of self-care with no guilt. Yeah. And I love that you appended that at the very end, like with no guilt. Um, cause I see a lot of folks move into like self-care practices and then the whole time they're doing whatever the practice is, they're like, Oh, like, Oh, I feel bad. I have this kind of guilt or I should be there. I should, I should, I should. That's a little bit of that shooting on ourselves also. So yeah, when we clarify, and this again is like part of the whole point of this practice, when we really clearly dial that in, it's self-care with no guilt. I'm now going to start to tune my focus into how do I learn how to do this in a way that feels really good and doesn't sort of bring in more of um, that guilt. Okay, so somebody popped into the Q&A. How do you keep yourself on track? Do you use post-its on the mirror, set aside time for reflection, set a meeting reminder? It can be hard to start a new practice. Yes to all of those. Um, for the person that, that asked that, yes to all of those. Um, I'm a huge post-it note fan. Um, I was just telling somebody there's a story early in my career where a city clerk that I was working with came in my office and I had all these post-it notes and she was like, oh, that looks unprofessional. That's terrible. And it was like a moment where I had to sort of be like, oh, but this is the practice that works for me. Um, so yeah, I have no city clerks that are investigating my home office now. So they are everywhere. Um, all over here, in case you don't believe me, um, on the desk, like, there we go. So post-it notes for me, I'm a visual person. So it helps to see it everywhere. Um, I've got one in my bathroom and I have the ones on like my office desk. I have a um, screensaver. The, the background of my phone actually has one of the, the things that I'm kind of working on. So a bit more of a mantra. Um, I do journal in the morning. Um, and one of the ways to keep that really alive is at the top of every day or every month, depending on what you do, to write like sort of your intention, like this is the year of, or this is what I'm trying to get to. Um, so that helps. And then honestly, what has helped the absolute most is a small group of dedicated people who are also trying to grow. And I let them know, dude, this is the thing I'm trying to work on. And then whatever they're trying to work on, we kind of symbiotically sort of help each other um, work on that. So customize it 
to your great extent. And if you want to change it partway through, change it partway through. That's also okay. Like that's fixed and growth mindset. What's worked for me at the beginning of the year oof, might need to be a new word partway through. Um, and then give yourself some grace because it can be hard to start a new practice. Um, how do we help? This is a, a question that came through the chat. How do we help our young adult children that have been impacted by COVID times find their drive and motivation again? They used to be great with follow through and they just don't have drive to create a plan for the future. Um, interesting question. So my stepdaughter is now 23, um, two kids of her own. And I'm, I'm kind of watching her and her partner as they sort of make their early adulthood, um, life decisions. So I feel this question, um, there's a couple of nuances here. Uh, number one, there is, um, and I'm going to say this with, uh, awareness and love. It's not with judgment, um, that, they need to find that drive and motivation again in a way that we understand. So I know in my world, it's showing up real differently for these two uh, young adults than it probably would be if I were to be making the decisions. And it's definitely different than what it looked like for them um, three or four years ago, for sure. Um, so one kind of, can we release and move into learning from them what's important to them? Um, versus, uh, and kind of loosen up that desire for it to have that kind of drive and motivation the way we want to. That being said, there's a whole lot of fear um, around this and we want them to be well and safe and all those kinds of things. Um, that drive to create a plan or not having the drive to create a plan for the future. Um, couple things on that one. Number one, if COVID taught me anything, I always say it gave me my two new favorite F words, which are fluid and flexibility um, or fluidity and flexibility, fluid and flexible. Um, because I was the queen of life plan, strategic plan, five-year plan, steps to execute. And it was so drastically upended for everybody in the entire world that there's less of, um, I'm seeing this kind of globally in this clients like that I work with like internationally. So it's not just here in Arizona. Um, a lessened need or desire for a strict plan that becomes executable, um, which is really untethering for a lot of us who are more comfortable. Um, the other thing that's possibly going on there, I see this with executive teams that I'm working on across industries. So this is private, nonprofit, local government. Um, a lot of folks don't have that drive because there's still healing left to be done from some of the difficulties that we went through for the last 42 months at this point. So COVID's like that toilet paper on the bottom of our shoe where I'm like, for heaven's sake, are we done with this yet? Like, can we move on? And it's like, yes. And ooh, there's still impacts going on. So something um, to maybe think through there is like, is there some healing to be done that needs to still um, happen? And then asking them really uh, clearly, what do you need and what do you want? And then being ready to receive that it might be different than what we, what we might want for them. And that's happening at like a coworker level. That's happening at like an employee attraction, retention level, all of those sorts of things. And yeah, um, somebody shared, and thank you for sharing this. I was struggling to push my son to get motivated once I stepped away and let him know he was going to have to take some accountability and figure it out, he found a way. And that last piece, he found a way. This is the number one thing I've learned from coaching, which coaching is different than consulting. Consulting is I have advice. I come in, I suggest some things. We work together. Maybe I facilitate. Coaching is I ask a lot of questions because I know you know what's best for you ultimately. Now, ages of kids, capability levels, you know, there might be some differences there, but creating that space to help them explore what they need and then kind of like stepping back and letting it happen um, can be a really beautiful way to do that. Okay, so thank you for sharing those. Um, I mentioned somebody had submitted a, a question. Um, theirs was more the, the question, of course, I didn't print it out, but it was essentially, Nicole, I am so burned out and so exhausted that the thought of reclaiming anything and setting any sort of intention is just completely overwhelming. What do I do? And so my answer to that is at first you rest, you rest and you have to resource yourself, whatever that looks like, because starting any sort of reclamation, reinvention, reset, has to first start with being recharged and charged up. 
So my friend Tiffany always says managing your energy is more important than managing your time. And if we look at like these little devices, uh, you can tell my daughter got a hold of it. Check out all my cool emoji stickers. We use these devices on a daily basis, right? And we plug them in on a daily basis for most of us until they're fully charged, right? Because we know how important this thing is to our day-to-day -day survival. And we don't do that with ourselves, right? We plug ourselves in once a quarter. We plug ourselves in once a year. We take a half a day, but then we spend most of it doing the laundry. And so that's like battery saver mode, not recharging. So for that person that had asked me about like kind of moving into the year, I really want to do this, but I can't even think straight. We've got to get you rested and resourced um, first. And so what that looks like, because a lot of us, this gets confused with like, I don't have two weeks to spend in a yurt in the middle of the forest somewhere. Well, neither do I. Like, I would kind of love to. That sounds amazing by myself, um, but probably not practical. So there's an investigation kind of point of what really brings us recharge, what really refuels us. Because going and getting a pedicure may or may not be it. Taking half the day to get caught up in errands may or may not be it for you. So really doing some of that like field research for like what really does this. And I just told my friend Yetta, she's um, this amazing uh, advocate. She lives in Washington, DC, and she works with the black community doing autism awareness. Her son is severely autistic and she's phenomenal. And we were talking about rest and how this has been incorporated for her. And I said, I can't wait to see what you bring to the world when you're fully rested and recharge because I know what we're getting now but holy cow what is that going to look like so that would be what I would kind of share with that person okay so let's move on um to question number five I promised you five crucial questions um because I love my alliteration here what will you need to fuel you having that kind of year for the rest of 2023 so that kind of year that you wanted um the year of living deliberately. Juanita, what are you going to need to do to fuel you having that? Because we always say, and this is one of my favorite quotes, um, hope is not a method. I can't hope my way into, I hope that happens. I hope this becomes um, the year of receiving and then I'm not going to change anything else. Um, and so kind of like directly connected to that question that I had received, what's going to fuel us getting there? Um, if you want to have the year of closure, um, Lana, like you mentioned, what kind of fuel are you going to need? So the, the year, like if I think year of closure, I think back to when I've had seasons of that in my own life, I'm like, Oof, I needed somebody to talk to. I needed more sleep. And I, I don't know, maybe I needed clarity. I needed a coach. I needed someone to help me because what a lot of our high achiever folks do, which is all of y'all on here and most of my people that I know, if not everybody I know working in and adjacent to local government is that we're really good at putting things on the list and starting to execute. And we get a lot of the way through, but we forget this part, like the, the getting plugged in every day or enough to bring that battery level up to a hundred percent. Kristen, you wanted the year of flip-flops what does that look like? And what's going to fuel you to actually make it there? I'm going on a road trip. I don't hope I have enough gas in the tank, right? I'm a lot more intentional about how far do I need to go? What's the type of road we're going to be on? Do I need an extra tank in the back in case we get, you know, stuck in traffic or lost in the forest or whatever? So what are you going to need to fuel you? Okay. So a couple of these um, are coming in. I need to keep exercising and giving and getting support from others. Um, I need some wins, big and small, which so then for Kathy, that's recognition, that's celebration, which from a neuroscience standpoint, every time you celebrate any sort of win, like, yay, I made it five minutes without checking my email, your brain gives us a little, your system gets a little hit of dopamine, which is one of our feel good chemicals and your body and your mind together go, well, that felt good. Maybe we can do that again. Like we might want to try that one more time. Um, I need to schedule time for myself first, not fill in the blanks around everything else. I need support and encouragement from my life partner. So you know what? I need to let my life partner know 
I need that. Um, my partner and I, we hit like the 15 year mark <laughs> this last spring. We were like, oh my gosh. Um, and one of the things that we have gotten really much better at is exactly that, Stephanie. Like, I am going to tell you more explicitly rather than like hoping my way into you recognizing that's what I need. Um, I need good habits or a routine to clear my head space. Cool. So I need to know what that is. And then I need to see if I'm practicing it. And if I'm not, then I need to troubleshoot for why that's not happening. Um, yeah, I need support, stretch assignments and patience, right? Solid recipe there, Don. Thank you. Yep. Uh, scheduled leisure time with friends, sleep, time to think, um, respecting my goals equal to my work responsibility. Yeah. And then giving myself space and grace. I need a strategy and pacing. Um, another sort of like neuroscience kind of thing that's sort of fun is when you come up with, like, if I want to get from here to here, this is the big goal. When I break this into little pieces, just the act of breaking it into pieces, I know this is the first step, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, that also induces that sort of dopamine release. And I'm like, oh, and proven, like studies have proven, we're more likely to actually get here if we break it down into those smaller pieces. So you're going to feel better. It's going to lessen your stress. And you're actually be more likely to achieve it. Um, Oh, Jessica, I need to accept that my baby's gone to college and refocus my energy. Yeah. And there's probably like, you've got some interim steps there. I'm sure. Right. It doesn't just go like from here whoop, over here. It's like, oh, it was here. What do I need? And then what's going to fuel me to be able to refocus my energy? How am I going to get fueled for that? I might need to cry a little bit more. I might need to write her a letter. I might write, you know, whatever it is. Um, I need to stay in counseling. Yes. Um, refocus on what changes I can bring to empower others. Um, I have a friend of mine and Kelly, I'm watching the time. So I got you. Um, I have a friend of mine who struggles with a really toxic, uh, supervisory environment above her. And she's a coach as well. And we were kind of talking about it. And she said, you know, the most powerful question that I've introduced lately is how can I shift my perception of who she works for insert boss's name here how can i change my perception of him not change his behavior not even change my reactions to his behavior but how could i just start to see him a little bit differently so that's one way that she's going to fuel kind of reclaiming a more positive work environment even though she can't really like impact those above her okay all right. I know we wanted to uh, reserve some time at the end. I do want to offer you one resource from me, and then we'll talk about one that's coming from Arizona Women um, Leading Government. Uh, this is my book. That's a little QR code that would take you to, you can buy it on Amazon. Um, but there are lots and lots of strategies directly related to this. That's why it's called Awesome on Your Own Terms, meaning not what everybody else thinks you should be doing. Um, that that is something that I like to offer. I'm happy to uh, chat with you about that. Um, and then if you'd like to stay connected, this is where you can find me on um, social media, you know, get online on my website, get my newsletter, my blog posts, that sort of thing, because I'd love to see how I could help. Um, and yeah, I want to say thank you to everybody for attending, but thank you for the um, amazing participation through the chat and your willingness to share and kind of do that self-reflection. Um, and I think Kelly, I know we're going to announce like conference registrations coming up and all sort of cool stuff, but my last message to you is please continue to be excellent to yourselves. Thank you. Nicole, thank you so much. Uh, that actually helps a lot. I have two pages worth of notes that I wrote down off to the side. So appreciate all of that insight. Um, a few final items for everybody. So just the Arizona Women Leading Government Happy Hour is tomorrow. It is from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Wandering Tortoise in Phoenix. We really would encourage y'all to attend. I mean, it gives you an opportunity to network with some of your fellow leaders. And the uh, flyer for the event is going to go ahead and be dropped in the chat. Also, if you haven't already, we want to make sure that you register to become a member of Arizona Women Leading Government. Our membership is low and affordable, and it will bring you the opportunity to connect not only with other female leaders in the state, but also to gain information and participate in events that help with self-improvement and to help you boost your career. And finally, as an added bonus of being a member, uh, you also get a discount for our annual conference, which will be held on October 19th and October 20th in the great city of Mesa, Arizona um, at the Mesa Convention Center.
Uh, we also have a lot of sponsorship opportunities available for those individuals and companies and organizations that would like to support the leaders, the female leaders in Arizona. And um, we're also going to put that flyer in the chat, but all of the information, the happy hour, the membership and conference and sponsorship is all available on ArizonaWLG.org. Please check out our website. There's also a lot of links to some great social media stuff that we put out there. We really appreciate everybody coming today. Nicole, thank you so much. And everyone have a good afternoon.